This is Live with Ryan Reese. Call now, 1-888-564-6173. Or post your questions using the hashtag LiveRyanReese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. We are back, and we have the squad together. We got the band back together. <laughs> back in effect. That's right. What happened? Where, where, was I gone? Were you gone? Yeah. Uh, I was gone. Last week was one of my kids' birthdays. And yes. So, uh, where were you last week? I don't know. Did, uh, you were gone last week. Was I? Yeah. No, right? no, 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 you did. Last you did. Week, uh, yeah, Aaron, Aaron Gonzalez daughters. and his oh, daughter. Oh, yeah, that was a crazy interview. Yeah. yeah. That's right. You yeah. guys were gone. Yeah. yeah I was gone. Yeah. We're, Melinda was gone. Yeah, we did the dating interview. That yeah. was pretty sick, actually. That was. I heard good things about it. Yeah. You know, I, I was thinking, um, you know, because you could say, well, you know, these girls, what do they know? They're 18, 19, or it was like 18, 20, 22, and 24 year old girls talking mm -hmm. about dating. <laughs> yeah, they're young daters, but you know what? When it all comes down, it doesn't matter how old you are. The whole thing was like aligned with holiness, right? With the Bible, so you know, people say, "Well, what do they know about dating?" It, They're you living can, it, you, though. You, you can know everything about dating <laughs> right? being sixteen years old. Not, I didn't get any bad comments, but right, I was yeah. thinking myself today, going, you know, that interview was amazing because those girls were brought up in the ways of the Lord, right? And because of it, they—that's how they're. You know, they're 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 dating or they're being friends, and then later on they'll get into a relationship, more serious relationship. But um, it's just being a whole, be, living that holy life and setting up um, boundaries. Boundaries, it's, and that's the way right. you would date if you're if if you're a Christian. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so um, which isn't easy. Older people need to <laughs> learn from these. Well, these yeah, girls. seriously. You know how many how many people do we talk to that are like. 30 years old, 25 oh, yeah. years old, and you know they're older and they have no knowledge of how to date or be in a relationship as a Christian. Or they, or they do, they do, but they resist. Uh, they just don't listen. They just don't listen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like you know what? But let me let me try this out. You they know, just I can do change this want. person. It's 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 a it's it's hard. I mean, I know when I grew up, you know, I, I wasn't trying to be a Christian, but you have that draw in you to you know. To what's see right. what's happening right. out there mm -hmm. and experiment and all that stuff. And you just got to decide if you're going to be follow God or not. That's pretty much what it comes down to. Yep. And if you want to follow God, then it's easy. Right. But if you don't want to follow God, then. Well, then you're going to come back and be like, well, it didn't work for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you're trying to please two masters and you can't do that. Can't it's either it. you going all the way with the Lord or not. Mm -hmm. Someone said that. Who was that? Oh, that's Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. Who, who, so, yeah, it was Jesus. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Uh -huh. He nailed it. Yeah. He, he always does. I know. Well, crazy? I was at Labor of Love last weekend. Yeah, oh, that's right. Uh, down in Huntington Beach. I think it's Huntington Beach. Is that the end of Huntington Beach where the Jackson Bolsa Chica? Is? Bolsa Chica and Huntington, think, right where yeah. they meet. Yeah, it was cool. We went down there. We had a whosoever booth set up. And um, dang, the senior pastor, I forget what his name is down there, Joe. Joe, he uh, he had us out, and uh, he invited us. He invited me actually to come, kind of. He, he did some like question and answers just off the fly. Mm -hmm. it, it was pretty cool. Um, got to hang out there, and then I got this DM from this girl uh, when I left, and she's like, "Hey, I was trying to track you down, but I was working a booth, so I just told her to call up the radio show tonight. So I was gonna have her okay. uh, pull her in at the beginning of the show. But then we got a lot of questions. Yeah, we do. From uh, well, how many do we have? I don't know if we're gonna be able to get them all, but no. we will. We have eight, eight. questions mm -hmm. tonight that people have uh, hit me up on the direct message. You know, if you're listening, and you want to hit us up on a question, you don't want to call in. You could hit me up on the direct message, and we'll answer the call. Or you could call in, and the number is eight 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 five six four six one. Seven three. I have uh, Sean McKean in studio and Melinda Reese, and uh, I just love the dynamic of all of us hanging out yep. and going for it. So we're going to go ahead and take this call from Ashley, from I don't know where she's at. Do uh, Doherty. Doherty. Where's it? Oh, Doherty, California. There it is. All right. Uh -huh. Hey, Ashley, how you doing tonight? I'm doing fine, thanks. <laughs> I'm sorry I missed you at Labor of Love. Oh no, it's okay. I was like super busy, and then like I didn't like I tried to get over there, but it was just crazy busy so and then i saw you were busy too and i was like all right well i'll just use instagram <laughs> hey there it is huh yeah it was it was crazy that day people you know a bunch of people were just coming around and we got to pray with people and hang out and yeah it, it was, was pretty amazing it was a it was a good event i liked it there was actually one girl that came up i didn't tell you guys about she comes walking because it's an open event to the whole beach so oh, okay. there's just one girl that comes walking through and she's like she she looks similar to the girls we used to hang out with back in the day. Right. 
wild, <laughs> a wild girl, right? right? I mean, she has like a weed, like weed covered T-shirt on. Uh-huh. You know, she has like some tattoos behind below her, her. Um, I don't know, like below her. Buttocks, I guess. Buttocks area. Buttocks area. I don't know what you're saying, Christian radio. But it has like saints and sinners tattooed on one under each leg. Really? Uh-huh. You know, and like, but she looked like, I, I think she could have been, a, I'm not judging, but just from her looks and the way she is, she reminded me of like our old stripper friends, right, you know, right. like that kind of that vibe. Kind of vibe yeah. So I, you know, I walked up to her. I was like, whoa, this girl just walked into this Christian event. Right, right. She's standing out like a sore thumb. People were all, like, all the girls were like kind of looking at her like, What's, she What's doing up with here? this chick? So I just walked up to her and started talking to her. She was French Canadian, mm-hmm. and she believed that she was God. And Whoa. I tried kind of talking to her about, you know, Jesus. I'm like, well, what do you think about Jesus? She's like, I, I am God. I, we are God. We are oh. all gods. And you know, I could tell she was stoned out of her mind, right, right. not only from her T-shirt, but she yeah. was. So I just said, all right, hey, we don't love you. I go, you know, um, God has a plan for you, and I'll, I'll talk mm-hmm. to you soon. And she just kind of took off, but. Yeah, it was cool for non-Christians to come in. That's right. awesome. So God, God's got a number, you know. But what's up with you, Ashley? You wanted to hit me up and, and talk to me about a story that somehow that you got affected by the Whosoever's Movement or something? Yeah, it was. Um, it was uh, early. Uh, I got saved October 2010. Okay. And it was a few, obviously it was a few years ago. Yeah. But it was definitely at like the Friday night over at, you know, Calvary Chapel, Golden Springs. Yeah. And it was just a night, like, right when I got saved, I had really just, like, I had argued. My dad was real sick, and I was arguing with my mom, and I was really trying not to be around a bunch of Christians, like, just Mm. super angry. Mm -hmm. And my friends were like, come on, just come on, just let's go. And so I don't even remember, like, what the study was on, but I, because of how, like, angry I was, and, you know, it was a few years ago. Yeah. But um, it was towards the end when, um, you know, and Ryan, you were definitely teaching. I remember that moment. And it was like right at the altar call and I had already gotten saved. So I was like, that doesn't really apply to me. Yeah. But you were talking, that was the first time I heard about backsliding and like, just like coming back to him, getting things on track. And I was like, what? And I kind of perked up a little bit and I was like, all right, fine. Like I'll listen. And then like, you know, you kind of, you know, like when the altar calls go, they keep going and you're like, all right, I know that there's somebody out there. I know that there's still people out there. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm just going to keep it going. And I was there with like a couple other people too. And I got up and I was like, all right, I think this applies to me. I felt that urge. Like, I didn't know then it was the Holy Spirit, but yeah. like, I was like, I kind of feel like I need to go up there and just like reconnect because my dad was like real sick and I argued with him and I was arguing with my mom and I was like, I just kind of feel like I need to get back on track. But the moment of impact that really like, even though that was pretty like, you know, it was moving because like I finally went up and like, all right, I think I, you know, got you know, prayed for. And I was like, all right, so this is cool. But when I got back, I wasn't making eye contact with anybody up until that point. And this group of kids, I say kids, I was like 20 something. So I'm 30 now. So it was like, they were Gosh, my age. Old, <laughs> <laughs> I, was I know, right? I feel like it. But, um, so I, I sit down and they were like, you know, giving me like the high fives, like, yay, good job. And I was like, yeah, I was already saved, but this is cool. And then this kid hands me this card and I was like, all right, Okay, thanks. And then they walk away. But then I look at the card, and I guess you could tell something was going on, obviously, because I had gone up there. And it was a scripture. And he said, and the scripture said, may God do work. And it was Isaiah 40, 30, and 31. And I was like, I don't really know what scriptures are yet. So I kind of looked it up. And I, when I read it, that was the moment where I felt like, oh, wow. Like, it was just so emotional. And then, like, I totally felt like that was something for me, like, at that moment. Mm -hmm. Like, I felt like, how did this kid know when I didn't even, like, look at him? I didn't make eye contact with anybody. I was just so, like, disconnected. And then during the whole moment, and then once he handed me that card, I looked up and he was gone. So I couldn't even, like, thank him after I looked up the scripture. But he was gone. And it was was like, oh, okay. And I showed my friends that were with me. And they were like, that's so cool. Like, that was, like straight up the Holy Spirit. And I'm like, what? Okay, <laughs> this is cool. But like, all right. and I still have that card wow. in my Bible with the scripture highlighted. Um, and I carry that around with me like Just all the time. Little, anywhere memory, my, yeah. As a reminder, like every time, like, you know, my dad ended up passing away hmm. um, shortly after that. But like, you know, it's just, you know, because he's talking about when, you know, the Lord just comes in when you're, you know, you're tired and you're, you know, your strength is not there. So anytime I feel like 
I haven't been that angry, but like when I'm tired or when I'm just like super like I can't do this, like I definitely use that as like a reminder. And it was at the Whosoever's Friday night. So that's why I was like, uh, like I need to tell Ryan. That like, is awesome. Thank you, you know so what? much. That yeah. is so that is so cool. That that verse you have is like your life verse. You know, that's that, what I was just gonna yeah. say. That's, that's your life verse. Yeah. Like I, I got my yeah. life verse, everyone has their life verse. But you know what? That yeah. that Friday and night I, still exists. It's every Friday night. Yep. Um, I mean, there's yeah, so many rad cool. stories of, of people coming in and, and getting saved. I think your microwave's um, going on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or your alarm. The, the burrito's ready up. or something. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> Sorry about that. No, it's all good. Um, no, but that's awesome, man, that God got a hold of you and, and God gave that dude oh, that word of knowledge of, of a scripture that was going to um, impact yeah. you and you let you have a Holy Spirit encounter and and now here you are serving doing you know doing your thing and so you're you're doing yeah. pretty good now God you know you're growing in a deeper relationship with Jesus oh completely and so right after that I ended up um, getting plugged in at Calvary Chapel Monrovia awesome oh, cool. so I've been there for like the last four years I'm like part of the choir team uh-huh. I serve on hospitality and it was just it was kind of funny too because. We had just, um, this last March, April, March, April, we went to Israel right when Golden Springs was in Israel, too. No way. Did you guys cross paths? Huh? Did you guys cross paths? No, but we, like, because we were on social media, we're like, hey, by the way, like, because we went with uh, Calvary Chapel La Mirada. Yeah. They're like, hey, so, like, Golden Springs is here, too. But we were in, like, I guess, opposite sides of Israel. (laughs) And that was, like, my first trip, like, ever. Yeah. Um abroad and then like to have it be in israel it was even more like overwhelming was it killer or what? like oh my gosh i got like in the jordan river you got dunked um, in I the got, jordan uh, I got, yep i did i got baptized and then on the sea of galilee i was like i'm not like a crier yeah. but yeah, like every time, time like i turned around i was like crying and i'm like guys this is really not like i'm not a crier <laughs> <Right. but> like <laughs> the whole trip i'm like ah oh, where am i so it was really overwhelming but Dude, that's it was awesome. pretty amazing like you know six years going on seven years being saved and I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Well, you okay. know, this is such a, um, just a, it's, it's just cool, you know, to, to hear these, these stories lately. You know, I've been talking to these guys in the studio. Um, I, over this last month, I, I've been getting so many direct messages and, and emails mm-hmm. that people are sending in of, of just like how people have been impacted, you know, yeah. from the show and the movement. And it, it's literally, it's kind of been like, more than ever right now. I don't know yeah. if God's right. maybe just kind of telling me like, hey, what you're doing is good and maybe like we're yeah. going to face like trouble, hardships in the next like month or something. Great. <laughs> you know, because sometimes God guy gets That's you like, yeah. he, he lets you know, <laughs> hey man, it's all good, but you're going to, you're going to hit some hardships. Yeah. So keep doing what you're going to do. He prepares you mm-hmm. yep. or whatever. I don't know what it is, but you know, we've been getting a lot of these, these rad praise reports and uh, I just thank you for, for the encouragement. Yeah. Um, we're, that's why we're here on Saturday nights, that's right. you know, I mm-hmm. uh, could be doing a million other things, but there's people that are, that were, are where you were mm-hmm. back then that are bitter at God, maybe dealing with yeah. addiction, you know, maybe been through some, just, just some crazy stuff, or maybe they, they have everything, you know, mm-hmm. money and success, but they're empty yep. and nothing is going to fill that void, but a relationship with Jesus. That's why Jesus said, come to me, all you that are thirsty. You may come to me and you could drink and I'm going to give you torrents of living water. I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit just like you received. And that's that peace. And then they find out the reason why they're created and then they, they live that spirit-led life that Jesus lived and uh, they live that good life. So this is this is why we're here. We thank you, Ashley, yeah. for calling. Give our love mm-hmm. to all the, the family over at Calvary Chapel. Um, Monrovia. Monrovia. I think we're going to be going to Cal- um, Monrovia High School with the Kill the Noise Tour shortly. I think that's Sweet. that's that's on the list. And, um, yeah, looking forward to it. And I'll, I'll see you when we get over there. Yeah, that's so awesome. Thank you so much for what you do, too. Like, it really is pretty amazing. Like, you know, you just reaching out to everybody like that, too. It's awesome. Awesome. Yeah, we, got, we got to be out there with, with everyone. Yep. Just yep. like yep. Jesus. He yep. was with everyone. He was mm-hmm. in the temple. Then he was eating with the tax collectors. And, uh, you know, I was tripping out today as he was even at that place, uh, Caesarea Philippi, you know, where they used to worship the God Pen. Right. right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there, when you go there, when you were there in Israel, you, you go to Caesarea Philippi. Remember when Jesus said, who does man say I am? And he had all his disciples. 
He took yep. all those guys yep. to that place, and that's where they worshiped the god of Pen, which the god of Pen was, you know, half man, half like a uh, goat, mm -hmm. and he had like the the, mm -hmm. the flute thing, and you know, the myth goes that they would they would chase chase they would chase women through the um through the the forest there and have sex with them. Mm -hmm. So this was a very and they would even do um s satanic um sacrifice, mm -hmm. blood sacrifice there. So if you think about where Jesus was. He was there in this place where they had major witchcraft, a major worship center. Mm -hmm. And Jesus took his disciples there. Right. Like, dude, he was not just like, that's the world out there. Dude, he right. was in gnarly places right, where exactly. they were like doing blood sacrifice and having orgies and stuff mm -hmm. out there. And he took his disciples there and said, yeah. hey, who does man say I am? And then what he says after is he says, if you want to be my disciples, yeah. you got to turn from your selfish ways, pick up your cross and follow me. Mm -hmm. I mean, he gave one of the gnarliest uh, yep. sermons, sermons in one of the yeah. darkest places. Mm -hmm. People don't, if you don't, <laughs> if you don't study the Bible and you look at how people are doing outreach, especially even with the Whosoever's movement, right. we're, we're, dude, we're right on the money with Jesus. Mm -hmm. We're going right to where the craziness is, right. you know? Uh -huh. So that's, that's what it's all about. That's what, that's, that's what we're called to. So, thank you, Ashley. We love you, and you're we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. All right. Bye, Ryan. Right. Bye, guys. Bye. Take care. Thank you. If you're tuning in right now, this is live with Ryan Reese. If you want to call in with any of your questions, the number is 888-564-6173. Again, the number is 888-564-6173. Always want to give a shout out for the Kill the Noise tour they've been doing. I know you guys have got a lot of stuff booked right now, over 13 high schools. I know more are coming, but if you have a vision for your high school, um, hit us up at the Whosoever's. You can go to the website, make sure that um, you go through all the social media as well. You'll keep up to be with everything that's taking place if you want to donate to the cause you can there's amazing gear that's out there hats accessories shirts everything and all of that goes right back into the movement the fun the vision um, that god's leading you guys to do free high school tours yep. free, free band free music free stage free food free product even free bibles we get them from the gideons mm -hmm. they give us uh, the gospel of john's and then what we do is we even get the information of the kids and then we set them the free radio shows. Wow. <laughs> exactly. You know? That's cool. It's epic. Yeah. All right, before we get into these questions, I, there, I got one comment, um, another DM from a dude out in Switzerland I want to read. He says, uh, his name's Ink Invaders. Um, he's a tattoo artist and he says, listening to your radio show, uh, it's a big support. Just got sober. Lots of things happening. For me, God is so good. Want to meet you next time I come out to Cali or should I spread the whosoever's here in Switzerland? People need to hear it. Lots. God bless you. Got tons of artwork like this. And he sent me some artwork that he wants to donate to the movement. But here you go. You got this tattoo artist out in Switzerland. Switzerland. We're here in California. Yeah. This dude got impacted by the radio show because it's a live webcast, obviously, at ryanreese.com. Mm -hmm. And all the archives are there, too. But um, we're reaching into Switzerland. Yep. Crazy. So what we were talking <laughs> about with Ashley, just the impact of like, you know, different things that we've been able to be a part of. And this is it. When God leads us in different things, anybody, mm -hmm. anybody, if there's a ministry that's led by the Lord, you allow God to take care of the results. We never met Ashley before up to that point, but you see like this one life was touched years ago and now she's being involved in ministry, God's touching her life. And this platform of doing the radio, man, we do hope that it is an encouragement. We get encouraged by these words that are um, being spoken of like how it's impacting all ages too. That's what I've seen. I see right. young people listening to the show, older people listening to the show and encouraging. You know, me and Ryan, were, we were talking on the way out here too, right? About just, um, you were talking about reading that old that article on the Beatles in the Rolling Stone magazine. This month's and, Rolling Stone, yeah. And I was talking about um, watching this old movie, talking about the Vietnam and, and the hippie stuff and everything in the culture. I was just looking at it from another perspective again of just like, man, the unrest that was there in the society at that time where people were over the government. They were, the, the war that was taking place, there was so much unrest. Um, a lot of people being assassinated. A civil right movement during that time. There's so much unrest and people were looking for peace and satisfaction mm -hmm. through new age mm -hmm. through a mist, uh, uh, eastern mysticism lsd these enlightening experiences and what happened is that eventually a lot of them came were bankrupt as far as right. spiritually they were looking for spiritual that means but they were broken spiritually. Yeah, empty. You know, Jimi Hendrix, all these guys mm -hmm. who were playing music, a lot of them dying at young ages, trying to find life and meaning, 
and we see that in our culture today. today. And, exactly. And, and, right? Yes. We were talking sure. about that. I mean, yeah. I mean, look at like think about this. You know, they have that festival Burning Man that's been around for over twenty years now, mm-hmm. but it's just getting trendy. But it's this de- it's this party that's out in in the desert, mm-hmm. and um, people are going out there to find like they they go once a year, and it's there's no money. Have you right. heard of it? Uh-huh. It's yeah. like only bartering, right. but everyone's, you know, they say everyone's equal, you know, exactly. so you have like Marcus Zuckerberg there mm-hmm. from fra- he's, Facebook. Facebook, Facebook, and you have all these other people and everyone's equal there and it's love and, but they like brought Timothy Leary, she, Timothy Leary's ashes last year and they had a whole ceremony and they poured them out into this thing and then they lit it on fire and they had this LSD trip and this whole, Whoa. yeah, it's like this full <laughs> like deal from out the there. From the 60s. Yeah, 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 it carries over, right? right. And then you got, you know, these electronic parties, you know, the rave scene that people are going out there every weekend. I used to go to them. And Over 500 people got arrested or something like yeah, that last week. But all, right. all these drugs, people are like trying to find like love and this, the ecstasy is this, MDMA is this love drug and everyone's looking for this love. It's the same stuff that's happening now, just like in the 60s and 70s. Look at our government. Exactly. Our government, we got a crook Hillary running for president. <laughs> right. You know, am I allowed to say it on the radio? <laughs> Whatever. That's my opinion, right? <laughs> we got Trump. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, hey, I'm I vote for the Republican Party. Okay? Yeah. I mean, it's just yeah. like I'm not voting for no man. I think you yeah. know, presidents are all puppets anyway. Right. Yeah. Um, God's they don't really have that much power if you think yeah. about they don't. It. No. They don't. They don't. But again, that's my opinion. Right. Right. You know, right. Yeah. I'm voting for the Republican Party because of morals. Yeah. Of you know what I believe, what the what the Bible believes. I'm not voting for any man, right? You right. know, but um, it's the same things that's going on. What, are we at war? Absolutely. Right. Yeah, we are. I mean, you look back at the '60s and '70s and all that stuff. It's very similar. Yep. Well, think about it. What does the Bible say? There's nothing new under the sun. Nothing. And we have to keep going through it. Why? Because we're never learning our lesson. Mm-hmm. Back in the '60s and when you know the Jesus People Movement and everybody was you know turning to God, it's like, we're like the Israelites. Then all of a sudden we forgot about it. Mm -hmm. And then we went back to our selfish ways. Mm -hmm. And now that's why we find ourselves the way where we are today. Right. Because we never learned. Yep. You know? And that's a big mark of our society today, even more so than back then in the hippie uh, hippie people movement is the selfishness. Exactly. We are a selfish society, you know? And the way people vote, they vote selfishly. They Mm -hmm. they vote for what's going to be better for me. They're not thinking about the future. They're not thinking about their, their children in some aspects because... That's what's going to take place. Yep. Uh, you think about the, the flesh first, and you're always going to go wrong. Exactly. Every, every single time. Yep. Gnarly. Yeah. Yeah, this revival pray. has to break out. We, yeah. We're in interesting times. We're, I we're know. in exciting times spiritually. This is a time for the church to wait. The ch- yeah. For the church to wake up. You know, there's that scripture in the book of Romans that's that that says, "Wake up for the, the time is short." Our right. salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Like, mm-hmm. look at the signs all around you. This should be exciting. This should be encouraging. This should be driving your life um, when you're led by the Spirit of God. This Ma- is the hey, time. Mark, Mark 13, 13, or Mark 13 talks about, you know, the end times. The right. nation's right. going to go against nation, famines, earthquakes, all this stuff. I was just reading it today, and, and he says, Jesus says, these are the birth pains, mm-hmm. you know? And, and it's awesome. Like it's going down. So this exactly. is exciting times. Yeah. I mean, I got a wad of cash in my guns and my ammo at my house <laughs> and some food and stuff just in case something pops off. Exactly. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm yeah. excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to use it all, right? I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> no, there, there's definitely unrest. You know, a lot of people in society are so stressed out. People are. People are stressed are. out about stuff. I mean, growing up in Southern California, you got to drive on these freeways all day. Time, exactly. it's, it's hard. Um, but financially, people are going crazy. These elections, you know, people are going crazy. Our, our young people are just being burdened with so much stuff. And hey, are, are people, so. hey, just a little side note. Honestly, like, an earthquake could happen or some crazy nuclear attack or right. something. Not not to sound all like to scare people, but this is like, we got to be smart. Right. Something could happen, mm-hmm. a war, or what if ISIS just arises or something, right? Right. In our, in, in, in United States yep. or something happens or the bank gets shut down. You saw, you heard about that news with Wells Fargo. They just fired like 3,500 3, employees for yep. making fake banking. Right, right. Something could happen with the bank. Say stuff gets shut down just right. for like a week. Mm-hmm. Or something, or if there's a big earthquake, because you know they say California could always have an earthquake. Right. Something happens, stuff rattles out of, out of you know shops are shut. I mean, are people prepared to like? Do you have food and stuff? Right. And just no. it's just case things get shut down for like a a week or something. I, know. I mean, you know, I mean, we've 
back east when there's like storms and different things. It turns into a, a mess. Yeah, exactly. But like the state of war that we're in, Russia's messing with our American aircrafts. Iran, Iranian ships are coming out messing with our ships out there in the Mediterranean. North Korea is messing yeah. with nuclear weapons I mean, again. Let's, like, let's not be stupid here. I, okay? I'm, I follow the news. I'm, I'm in the news every single day. Yep. Signs of the times. And then I read mm -hmm. Matthew 13 today. And I'm like... Yeah, I, I mean, I'm prepared to protect my family and right. to feed my family. I suggest you guys go get some food. I, I, I know, I need to go have some food. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was terrible. I don't know where it was the other day. I was watching yesterday. There was almost a terrorist attack with uh, two women had a bunch of bombs that stuff was strapped in, and they were trying to light this Where was this? Fire. I forget where it was. It was on the news. It was actually a mom, a daughter, somebody else that were radicalized. They were trying to set it on fire, but they were having problems with lighting it that they got scared and actually took off. But if they were able to, it was going to make a huge explosion. Dude, that's insane. Dude, I'm telling you, and dude... Yeah. And, so and, and, and especially right now, too, yeah. with all the elections and everything, exactly. yeah. people are flexing... People are flexing on America. Yeah. yeah. And and uh, the Obama administration, they're not doing nothing. Yeah. Yep. No, they're nothing. like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They don't even know what's going on. Tomorrow... He's like, September, can I go golf? Tomorrow no, is September, September 11th. 11th. September 11th. It'll oh, be it over is. 15 yes. years from September years. 11th, 2001. So there's a lot of... There's high alert in a lot of areas. Um, it's reality. We live in a different time, you know? Yeah. The, the terrorism stuff that's out there. As a, as children of God, this is what we were saying a second ago. It's like, this is time for us, a place where we need to be looking up. The Bible says, for our redemption our draws near. near. Look at stuff in our world today from an eternal perspective. That should motivate you to share with your loved ones the truth of the gospel, for you to live out the life of the gospel. Mm -hmm. um, because truly... Man, we're not guaranteed tomorrow. No. It shouldn't be a fearful thing because I believe that my life is in the palm of God's hand. And so when you have at rest with that, no matter what's taking place in the world, right. you can have peace. Well, the thing is, too, it's like it does. there doesn't even have to be a catastrophe. We're still not guaranteed tomorrow. You could, nope. you know, drive off, get in a car accident and, and you know, get killed. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Nobody knows. And that's why you have to be so sure in your faith that you know where you're going. It's not time to mess around. It's not time to be like, well, I'll get it together tomorrow. Who knows if there is a tomorrow? For sure. And that's the thing. Life crazy. is but a vapor. But you know it what's is. so awesome is like when you are walking with God, you don't have to worry. I know. I, I feel peace every day. I mean, I'm exactly. just, honestly, I'm excited. I, You know, people are like, oh man, these last days, dude, I'm excited. Yeah. Because I'm like, God, what do you want to do with my life? Right. Like, you know, I, I want to reach as many people as possible. Like, Send me on a world tour or I don't know, like whatever right. we got to do. Like I'm, I'm down for, for whatever. Yep. That's why I told you, you know, we're going to be going to break in about a minute. But that's why lately I kind of just been shutting out of a lot of different things and just really focusing on reading the Bible. I'm not reading any other books of other people's opinions on the Bible right now. I just feel this is just a place where I'm at in my life right now right. where I'm fasting, you know, here and there um, and just reading the word. And just going, okay, God, like, what do you want to speak to me? And, and when I open the Bible, dude, God speaks to you. He literally, I was thinking something this morning and I, I didn't pray. I was just thinking like, God, I need you to speak to me about a couple things. I opened the Bible and the first chapter, God spoke to me about both things I was, I was like thinking this mm. morning. He right. wants to speak to us. He, yes. he wants to talk to us. He wants to give us the game plan. Exactly. But sometimes we get too busy. We make our th things so busy. We don't uh -huh. able to listen. Yesterday I was at my house and I was listening to a study on Chuck. I've listened to it twice. I listened on my way out here. I said, listen to it. It's a topical study off Matthew 11 where it says, come on to me, all you are heavy laden, and I shall give you rest. And Chuck starts br breaking down how, you know, it, it's something that it, when I look at scripture, I, I believe, this is Chuck saying, that God didn't design us, the, the, the human mind and the way that man is physically to live this fast paced life, you know, because he wants you to have rest and peace. He's like, then he goes on, he's like, think about it. You work 50 weeks out of the year and two weeks you take a vacation <laughs> and you want to do what? You want to go out into the woods. You want to <laughs> slay by a, a quiet stream. You want to be away from all of this stuff where that's what God maybe created you to do for this whole For the whole life. Life. <laughs> That's interesting. It was I a, I just stopped. I was stopped in my kitchen just like. All right. Hey, hold yeah. that thought. We yeah. got 30 seconds. <laughs> We're going to be back. In about uh, two minutes, right yep. after the break, you're listening to Live with Ryan Reese. I have Melinda Reese and Sean McKeon in studio, and it's going down. We're talking about all kinds of crazy yeah, stuff we are. right now. <laughs> it's the end as we know it. Exactly. No. <laughs> we'll see you guys right after the break. We love you guys.
with Ryan Reese coming up. Is everything all right? Sure. Call now, 1-888-564-6173. Or post your questions using the hashtag LiveRyanReese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Uh, I think I speak for the entire administration when I say... whoop de doo to live with Ryan Reese. Don't say we didn't warn you. Loud noises! Well, if you've been with us for the last 30 minutes, we got Sean McKeon <laughs> listening to a Bible study right now. Exactly. Chuck's been study. <laughs> uh, right before the break, I mean, we were talking about all kinds of stuff. We are talking about politics and and what else? And, and I don't know, all kinds of stuff. But we got to the point where we started talking about Chuck Smith. <laughs> and Chuck Smith was talking. Give us a recap on that because I want to yeah. kind of yeah, I'm not going into the woods. Yeah, so I was at my house kind of cleaning up and listening to Chuck and listening to his topical studies from his Sunday morning. And it's Matthew chapter 11 where it says, Come unto me, all you are heavy laden, I shall give you rest. And then as he goes off and he starts to break it down, he's like, You know, I, I ask myself, I wonder sometimes. <laughs> you know, we work 50 weeks out of the year and then we get two weeks vacation. And what do we want to do? Because he, what he says is like, I have a hard time thinking that God created us, our brains and everything, to live this fast-paced society like we do. And think right. about it. We live fast pace. And he's like, because when we want to take our two-week vacation, what do we want to do often? Go up into a cabin with no one around, <laughs> you know, <laughs> lay by a stream, <laughs> go fishing for our food so we don't have to go. Like everything that God has given to us and created us to, to have peace and rest in him away from all the distractions. Distractions can be a hindrance. There's people that can put burdens on you. There's yourself. You can take burdens upon yourself that you're not supposed to be uh, doing in your life and you don't have rest and peace. The Bible says that God has called us to peace. Even the stuff that we were talking about in the beginning of this where you know there's crazy situations taking right. place in the world today. There is a lot of unrest. Um, but Jesus even says in John 16 that says, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. In the world, you're going to have tribulation, but I've overcome the world and I can get you peace in the midst of it, you know? And so that Bible study ministered to me and just do like a reflection on my life. Like, are there things that I'm doing that God hasn't called me to do? I want to be in that, that perfect sweet spot with the Lord. And I want to have peace, you know? Right. I want to be the man that God's called me to be for my family, the ministry that God's called me to be and for things to flow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because easy to get stressed out and be have so many. I'm things trying going on. to figure. Out, I mean, I, this is an open conversation. We just happen to be live on the radio. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, thinking how because I've been wanting to like even cut back on stuff right. to less distractions. 
right. cut right. back on distractions. You know, and it's, it's how do you do it? How yeah. do you do it? You're phone. married. Yeah. You got your kids. Right. You got your job, and then you're trying to do your hobbies as well. Yeah. Or whatever that is. But it's 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 so gnarly. And this world that we live in, it's there's so much stuff. I mean, I think about these these young kids. Yeah. Dude, they got so many apps. Exactly. They're uh -huh. on all these different apps. I mean, I'm like limited. I'm like, okay, I got the the Instagram and I just share. Facebook, Twitter, yeah, right. I just shoot it out one. Mm -hmm. You know, but for the can you imagine just the more more apps, more distractions, and then you got your kids and your job and all this stuff. It's like there is a place of peace. If you could literally cut yeah. out that stuff and like what set like guidelines, like, okay, right. I'm going to be on social media 30 minutes a day. Right. right. Like imagine if you just did that. Right. Mm -hmm. How much time do we spend on social media? Yeah, a lot. Yep. That's yeah. insane. And you, you know, all the distractions that, you know, I've noticed it just like in, I don't know if you guys notice this, in your home, you know, maybe you come home, the things are going on, maybe you got the TV on, this is on or whatever. And sometimes if I just feel like, I just feel like unrest, I just start shutting stuff off. Shutting things right. off. Airplane And you know what? Mm -hmm. It seems like the kids mellow out. It just seems like I feel yeah. more at peace, you know? And, and it's sometimes it's just because, like chilling, vegging yeah. out on something. Well, even when you're yeah. watching other people's lives, even on Instagram. Right. Yeah. I can get anxiety from that. Heck yeah. Because you're, you're at home. Okay, okay, think about this picture, okay? You're relaxing <laughs> at your house. You're in bed, chilling. What's that? <laughs> you're chilling in bed, relaxing. And all of a sudden you start, you're on this... Instagram, you start going on this journey. Right, right. yeah, I know. Like, all of a sudden now, it's like a rabbit hole. Yeah, you're in bed. You're in bed relaxing. You should yeah. be relaxing. Uh -huh. yeah. And all of a sudden, you're looking through your Instagram, social media, and now you're on this journey of like seeing all these people's lives and they're out at the right. club or they're out here at this concert and like all of a sudden, you're like feeling these emotions. Right, right. And all this stuff. And now you're, now you're not at rest anymore. No, no. Yeah. So that's what yeah. social media does to you. It kind of yeah. gives exactly. you anxiety kind of. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's crazy because like... As a mom, like, I sit down once in a while and I feel guilty. I literally feel guilty for sitting down because I think, like, you know what? I could be, like, cleaning the floors. Mm -hmm. I could be dusting. I could be laundry. I mean, there's always something to do as a mom. I could be, you know, reading to my child. I could be doing something. And I sit down, I feel guilty. Like, I shouldn't be doing this. I need to be doing something. I need to fill my time with all this stuff instead of, like, no. Like, literally, like, just sit down and relax for once instead of always trying to fill every moment with something. Like I'm guilty. Yeah. yeah. Guilty. Yeah. yeah. I've been guilty of that too. Sometimes when I go on a vacation, it takes me a day or two to wind down. Like I have to oh, prepare yeah. myself. Like I'm like, sit, I'm, pre I'm, like right. I'm like sitting on an email. Okay, I'm not gonna respond. This that trying to get everything. But the first day is hard. Like you're okay. What's going on here? I hope this got done. You know. And then it's just before right. then you're able to kind of relax and chill but it takes exactly. a while to unwind it does right yeah and it's very easy to pick it up oh, you know yeah. that's why you got to be disciplined no, and then I'm there's that verse be still and know that i am god. god yeah but yeah. no we want to be like martha exactly running amok and one of the best ways to um hear from god is waiting waiting stuff especially in our society today mm -hmm. waiting and not jumping the gun a lot of times when we jump the gun we make emotional decisions uh, we get ourselves in trouble in a lot of ways um, but when you're able to slow things down, I believe things will just start to flow. Yeah. How they're supposed to. I asked my mom the other day. I said, "Why did God make like give us babies? Like they're like, <laughs> I mean, when I say babies, I mean they give us babies, right. and everything's so slow. Like you got to wait, feed them." She's like, "It's to slow you guys down. It was to slow you guys down. It's you know, what are you guys reading?" No, keep going. <laughs> keep going. I'm done. That was it. <laughs> I'm we missed it. What was I'm that? I'm looking at both of you guys. You guys are both reading something. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is I'm like, God gives, because we have the triplets right now. And, and right. I mean, it's Actually, it's action-packed. But if you have one baby, I'm like, there's everything's so slow. You got to feed them. Then they eat. And then they sleep. It's just this whole thing. And God, my mom's like, God gave it to us just to slow us down in life. Right, right. Because it does slow it you does. down. Yeah. And when it slows you down, it's like you can't go out and be on this like program right. that you built. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But so, it's hard to slow down. It's hard to get used to and be like, okay, like this is where I am. This is where I am right now. This is my life. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because yeah. you're so used to this other life yeah. that you have to think, okay, Lord, this is where you have me now. And where you have me now, you want to teach me something through this. 
Because yeah. there's always a lesson in every stage of life that you go through that he wants you to learn. I believe Chuck Smith's teaching men because <laughs> I swear, <laughs> as I think about it, I've had those times where I've been like, you know, stressed out or whatever, been at the home. Let's take the kids, go to a park, go to the park, let them just right. chill in the grass, just sit there. And be like, <laughs> So good right it now. It does, huh? It does. I feel so good right now. I need to get that tattooed on me. Exactly. Rest. Rest. Seriously, yeah. it's so hard though, man. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen when I leave the studio tonight, guys. I want to rest. But I don't know. The pool. The pool. All right. Well, hey, uh, let's <laughs> let's take this call. Um, Drew from Central Valley, California. We got Drew on the phone. How you doing, sir? What's up, Drew? Hey, um... What? Oh, you're breaking up. Okay, okay. Um, Hey, what's up, man? This is Drew, man. I'm out here in uh, California, uh, in Central Valley, California, man. Right on, um, man. Uh, yeah, man. I I'm originally from Riverside. I uh, I grew up in the church. I grew up in Calvary Chapel and Harvest and whatnot, man. And uh, uh, I got I got a pretty... Uh, I'm in prison right now, man. And I'm oh, on my way wow. out. Dude, I'm, that's I'm on my way out right now, man. I just want to let you guys know you guys are doing a great job, man. And... Uh, Listen to you guys on the radio often, man. I encourage you guys to keep up the good work, man. Oh, that's Dude, awesome. That is um, so cool, man. That's cool. You guys get it? The, yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys, you guys are on up here, man. That's awesome. So, uh, yeah, I often li listen to you guys, man. You guys do a great job. I see you guys' motive to reach the youth, man. You know, before they, you know, start committing themselves to like, uh, you know, way out lifestyles and whatnot. That's pretty cool, man. But uh, yeah, I got, I got a pretty cool testimony, man. Uh, I just got my life sentence overturned, and I'll, I'll go into detail some other time. Uh, hopefully I'll run into you guys. Yeah, so, uh, you gotta come meet up with us. Yeah, find yeah, us man, when you get out. Okay. And, and I, I, it should be short. I should be home soon. But I will say, I was gonna ask you guys from here to then if you guys could help me out and just keep me in prayer because there's a couple of screws that I still need to tighten up, man. Yeah. yeah. All right, so, for uh, sure. Well, let's... Just, uh, you want us to pray man. for you right now? Yeah, sure. All right, cool. Lord, we lift up uh, Drew in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, that you've uh, already been doing work in, in there in his heart and even with his sentence. I pray, Lord, that you'll lead him by your spirit, God, all the way out of that jail, Lord, and into that new life that you created him for, Lord. But as a couple, like you said, a couple screws that need to be tightened up, Lord, God, you're in complete control, Lord. We just give you his life, his situation, and just to do a miracle, Lord. You did miracles all through the Bible. You're doing miracles still today. We ask that your eternal purpose will be carried out in his life, Lord. We ask that you will fill him with the Holy Ghost. And we ask, Lord, that um, that we, we just thank you, God, for what you're doing in his life and what you've done in his life in jail and the people that he's affected around him. Because when you're on fire for God, you affect people that are around you, Lord. It's just a domino effect. So we thank you for Drew, God, and we're excited to hear his story when he gets out, just to hear all the miracles you did um, to get him out of that place that he's in now, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen man. That was awesome, man. You guys wait for me, man. I'll, I'm going to run into you guys, okay? Come yeah. find right. us. We're, we're any Friday night, any Sunday night, any Thursday night, we're out here. Um, we're at Calvary Chapel Diamond Bar or Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa. Right on. Riverside is not too far from there, so. Uh, it's yeah, close. it's very close. Okay, man. All right, man. Yeah, love you, Drew. You guys have a good night, man. God bless, man, and keep up the good work, man. You too, right, brother. Dude, take care, man. Dude, that's cool, man. That is that's cool. I mean, think cool. about it. If how real God is, totally overturned his life sentence. I know, that's insane. <laughs> if that's not a miracle that or is, yep. a testament of uh, how amazing God can be in your life, yep. it's crazy. So cool. So cool. All right, well, hey, you know what? Let's let's take the, um, let's go ahead and take that uh, that one cutting question. Okay. So we got a, um, somebody wrote in and said, hey man, my girl is trying to stop cutting. She tried a ton of things and none of them seemed to help. Any advice? I'm really at a loss. Okay, what to do and don't know what God wants me to do. What's me to do for me? Well, the one thing that stood out to me is they, they tried a lot of different things. Right. And I would, let's just address that just to the masses because there are other people that are listening that deal with cutting, guys, girls, whatever. Um, there's only one thing that can change that. And it's a touch of God. Yep. And I got this question, I think last night or the night before. And, and when I was reading in Mark today, I, I heard that story of when Jesus was going through the town and uh, there's that lady that was bleeding for 20 or for 12 years and she ran after him and she literally like, she was desperate for him and, mm -hmm. and she like went through the crowd. I mean, there was a big crowd following Jesus and she was like crawling, pushing people all the way. I don't know what she was doing, but she was right. getting to Jesus regardless because she knew if she could touch Jesus that she, she would be healed. 
by faith. Right. And the story goes, she went, she reached out, she touched Jesus, healing power went out. Jesus turned around and said, who touched me? And his disciples are like, what are you talking about, Jesus? There's all kinds of people pressing against you. And he said, I felt healing power go out. And he turned and he found the girl and she basically said it was her. And he basically said to the girl, uh, I mean, I'll just quote it right here from the verse. He says to the girl, um, he says, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over. Mm. And it's a faith. It comes down to faith. It does. Either we believe, you know, I'm gonna let you guys add to this. Yeah. Either we believe the word of God, or we don't. There's yeah. no program, no religion, no classes you're gonna take, no curricul curriculum. I can't even say the word. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what that <laughs> is? I don't wanna say any words I can't spell. Exactly. Um, no curriculum, no, there's nothing that is gonna set anyone free from anything, even if it's anger, right. bitterness, yeah. homosexuality. Drugs, alcohol, greed, I mean, whatever it is, bad relationships, marriage, it's a touch from Jesus Christ. Exactly. And it's through faith. We are saved through faith. Mm -hmm. And through faith, believing what the Bible says, the stories are clearly here. They in the Bible clearly tells you how Jesus works. Right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he I read today he put his ear his fingers in the guy's ears and then he then he spit on his fingers and touched his tongue. Mm -hmm. Then another time he laid his hands on him and prayed for the guy. Then he said the words and the demons came out of the guy. A uh, different guy, and then I mean, Jesus heals in all different ways, but w everything that is similar is it's Jesus, right? Right, Jesus. Yeah, it's, so, it's what would you add? It's to that? believing and having faith that God is able to do all things. How big is your God? It will, you know, if you don't, ha if you have a small concept of God, your problems are going to be very big. If your concept of God is large, like God is able to do anything, your mm -hmm. problems are going to seem smaller. Uh, every time. Um, and as you're breaking down that story uh, that's found in uh, the, the gospel of Mark, we see that throughout all, like you're giving right. all those illustrations of those relationships. I think of two. I think of the two that Jesus spoke about a very high regard. Both of them were Gentiles. They weren't Jewish background. You had the Satyrian and you had the Syrophoenician woman. The, the Syrophoenician woman came and she's like, she only wanted the little crumbs that would come off the table. And the Lord was like, it's not, you know, good to give to the, to the dogs and stuff and she was displaying faith no matter what it took you're mm -hmm. able to fulfill what is needed in my life and I trust that and like I've never seen such great faith the same thing with this satyrian man he's like you don't even need to come to my house mm -hmm. I'm a man of great authority and I say to this one do this mm -hmm. do this one do that I understand that you are one of great authority you are the Lord and so I know that you can just heal from where you're at right now. And it's trusting and believing that God is able. And that's with every aspect. That's with your addiction. That's with your marriage problems. Mm -hmm. It's giving your to, to the Lord. Prayer works. It really does. Um, this goes back to what we've been talking about this night. We can get so busy, have all these distractions. We need to remove all that stuff. We need to get real with God in our lives. We need to pray. We need to read. We need to be by ourselves and allow God to minister to our lives. He will give you victory. You know, we deal with a lot of people, all of us do. Mm -hmm. People that are coming from drug problems, um, relationship problems. In reality, we're nobody special. We all walk through this path ourselves, you know. We came from lifestyles of drug, perversion, and all of these things. God is able. We're not just giving you lip service. God is able. Right. Okay, so the other night at Shine, um, in Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa, I had this, this guy's been coming to shine for, he's, a, he's, he's a dad. Like his, I think his daughter's like 18 or 19 or something. Mm -hmm. And he's a dad. He goes to, um, a church, uh, Ron Wilkins church, uh, right out there. So beach. So right? beach. So he's been coming to shine on Thursday nights and, and, you know, they were going through marriage problems and, um, for, and he's been coming there for a year and a half. And, and basically he just said, I'm, even though I'm going through marriage problems, I'm, I'm coming to church and I just want to see what God did. And, he says, he just says, hey, dude, Ryan, I just want to thank you, like, for having this night. He's like, I just want to step out and be out over here at this church just to let God kind of restore. And he says, and just through going through the word of God, right. he's all, now my marriage is back to normal. Mm -hmm. Right. There was nothing special. I don't, right. I didn't, I don't have any, like, programs right. at the church. I just go to the gospel of John. I just tell the Jesus stories. And that's what changes our lives. And I, when we're there at church, we're, we ask God, that we want the Holy Spirit to come down and we want people's lives to be touched. Right. And that's it. There's nothing <laughs> There's nothing to it. But no. I don't think people 
pray with that in mind. You know what I'm saying? Like they reach out to them, but they don't have that faith because mm-hmm. they're like, lip service. yeah, they're exactly. like, okay, well, yeah, I read in the Bible, but he's not going to do that today. Like, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like my problem, like, you know, because they're not willing to wait. Mm-hmm. They're not willing to be still. They're not willing to listen. And that's the thing. That's the Lord. That's what the Lord wants us to do. Because if we can't do that, then how can he speak to us? Because we're so busy speaking that we can't hear him. Yeah. You know? And you have to take time. Yeah. Like today, for instance. Okay. I've been, I went to like 12 shows in 12 days. <laughs> yeah. Busy. I was at concerts and and, right. and, and and other events. Kill the noise and all that. Yeah. Kill the noise, concerts. Uh, I even went to some like, see some other pastor guys speak and all this stuff. Anyway, but I didn't have time to get in the word. Right. Mm-hmm. I was just like on the run. So today I was like, dude, I woke up and I was like, today is, I'm chilling. I'm like reading the Bible. I read and then I got hungry, went to go eat, came back, read more and spent, just spent that time, prayed and just, uh, yeah. just wait. I even fasted a meal, you know, mm-hmm. just right. you know, not that I'm like a holy roller or anything, but yeah. I was just like, today I'm going to just do this. And I wanted tacos. <laughs> I wanted tacos, but I fasted right. to, you know, because I, why did I do that? Because I wanted to get closer to God. Right, yep. right. You know? Yep. And th- we have to do that. Exactly. And this happened, this is for your whole life. This isn't just when you're coming out of an addiction. Right. You know, this is something that has to be practiced in our lives forever. It's a lifestyle. You know, right? I mean, we, we walked with the Lord. I've walked with the Lord a little while now, and it's like, um, I go through seasons. I go through peaks mm-hmm. and valleys. I go through times where everything's flowing, man. Every time I open up the Bible, boom, click, minister to you. There's other times where I'm go- when I go through a grind right. in the midst of stuff. And- talk, talk, talk about that a little bit more because I th- think people, because we're, say we teach the Bible mm-hmm. or, mm-hmm. you know, people look at, think of pastors or, you know, they teach the Bible, they have radio shows. So they have no issues, yeah. They're, yeah. They got it all figured out. Yeah. Tell us about these seasons because they're real. Yeah. No. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Seriously. I, dude, o- o- over my life, I have gone through major peaks and valleys. I, I You know, um, times where I'm being used by the Lord a lot and things are flowing, doing well. And then times where there's just a dry spell in that or just in my own time of reading, it's just not clicking sometimes. And that's you know? normal. It's normal. Yes. Like where I'm just walking by faith. Your dad taught me that before. Mm-hmm. He talks about a time when, in like the mid-90s when he was teaching. He was teaching every Sunday morning, every Wednesday night, all this stuff. But he was going through a tough time. Right. You know? You're stepping out by faith. You're continuing believing God's word is true and, and real. But you go through some testings. And I've just gone, I call them dry times. Right. But those are areas that I've recognized in my life what I just need to exercise faith and trusting. And then God's going to meet me. I'm going to have that moment where it just perspective changes right i'm going to hear that study that it, that's going to be beneficial and i want to hear too from melinda because she's the mom common you're, yeah. you're not yeah you're common no, i'm just kidding no no you're you're a mom <laughs> yeah. you're relatable right, right. yep to, to right. listeners yep i would Tell say us, mom. yes let me tell you <laughs> no. i would say that for a mom it's very difficult to find time because your whole life is wrapped around your kids and what they're doing and yeah. taking them there and doing homework and feeding them and, you know, doing their laundry and all this kind of stuff. And so it's hard to find time with the Lord. But what the Lord showed me, it's not like, okay, you need to spend 30 minutes with me a day. And if you don't, well, then you're not right. It's yeah. like taking that time when you have it. Like there's times where like we get to school early and then I have 10 minutes. And I have a Bible in my car. Boom. And I read right I read a scripture. Mm-hmm. And now I just implemented that uh, when we're driving to school, I have my kids, we read a proverb. They each they take a turn mm-hmm. and we read a proverb and we, um, ex- I explain it to them. If they don't understand it, we go and we explain it to each other about like, okay, what did that mean? And how can you apply that to your life? And how can you work that into your day? You know what I'm saying? But there have been times where like, I don't want to read. Like, that's my biggest issue, like reading, Mm -hmm. finding that time to read. But you know what? I read, why? Out of obedience. Mm -hmm. Because I know if I'm obedient, the Lord's going to meet me there. And that's what it comes down to. It's not about hours. It's not about minutes. It's not, it's it's just when you can find that time, just open it, have it readily available. I have a Bible everywhere. Mm -hmm. So when I have that time, What about the phones? They're on the phones. And there's no excuse. Well, yeah, that's true. Yeah. (laughs) But you know, and you just read it. 
Yeah. It's true. Even if it's one chapter. Yeah. Or one scripture. It doesn't one, have to be a yeah. chapter. Yeah, you're right. You know what I'm saying? A you're scripture. Not, you're right. It could be a scripture. No, yeah. And that's where things flow and have peace. I don't like being put in rules and regulations right. upon my spiritual life, you know? Oh, I read five chapters a day. I'm good. Or I read right. 10 chapters. Or I read two verses or whatever. That time is necessary. Sometimes it's going to be longer, sometimes right. shorter, but it's it's all building in that relationship with the Lord that's needed in our lives. Exactly. And you know, we started talking about this because there's major issues. There's major issues going on in the world. There's major issues in people's lives today. And the answer is always the same. The Bible says that Jesus is the wonderful counselor. He is the great physician. He is the great healer. He is the great I am. He is the becoming one. He is able to do all that we need in our time of need always. And we just need to trust him. That's what it comes down to. Are we going to believe him? Do we believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God that has come to seek and save that which is lost right. and to set the captives free? That's do we the, believe? That's yeah. the question. That is the question. And if you do believe and you believe everything in the Bible, then any problem or anything you're going through, you go to Jesus and you believe that he created you as a masterpiece and he has plans for you. Mm -hmm. He has plans for your life. Yep. And they're to prosper you. Yep. You know, you do go for through hardship, but it's it's the journey. We're pilgrims here. Jesus says the road to heaven is narrow and and difficult. Exactly. But he also says in the Psalms that his word is a lamp to our feet. Yep. That guides us. If you're on that narrow, difficult road, as Jesus says, that eternal life, it's going to be hard. Right. And this is why you need this word of God to be a lamp to your feet so you don't get off the track and get off onto a some kind of detour. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So important. Yep. Always. Well, we got we got one phone call uh, here on hold, but um, I'm gonna have we're gonna have to take this after yeah. after we don't have enough time. I think we have like another minute. Look, we're gonna end the show here. We're gonna get to these other questions right. next week. Um, the whosoevers .com. Go there. Check out our product. When you buy our product, it basically money goes to funding our high school tour. We go to high schools, public high schools for free. We give them a gospel. We get them plugged into church. We get them plugged into the radio. We give them a Bible that we get from the Gideons. And uh, shoot, it's amazing. We feed them. Right. We give them free pizza. So um, we are a ministry. We are in the world, not of the world. We're letting our light shine. We're the salt of the earth. We're in public schools. These kids are going through crazy stuff. But we are um, we're hell bent to reach them, which is recklessly determined. We'll do we'll do whatever it takes at any cost. We'll go wherever we have to go to reach these kids and um, let them know that God loves them and he has a plan for them. And then we let God baptize them and we let God clean them up yep. by his Holy Ghost. Yep. You guys got any last okay. words? No, the, the message that we were looking at earlier is Paul Morales. Paul Morales, we know Paul Morales. He part of Golden Springs for a long time. He's on he the used way to work in radio with yeah, me. Did he? Paul on P. Morales. The, on the way to the hospital, blacking out, please pray for uh, Paul Morales. Yeah. Paul Morales? Yeah, yeah big We'll Paul. see you guys next week oh, as Paul. well. Yeah. Peace. Okay. Yes. This has been Live with Ryan Reese. To connect or find out more about Ryan, click on ryan-reese.com. Check us out next Saturday at 9 p.m. for Live with Ryan Reese.